Hello and welcome back to Shadowrun Returns with me, Barton. Okay, we're going to talk to these souls here. The air grows cold and the spirit of dead children coalesce from the vapor of your breath. Their cher cherubic faces are burned and their lips quiver as if they are about to cry. Their eyes are round and vacant and they glare at you now, unblinking. We are the innocent who have perished in the flames choking on smoke as we fell from the sky, crying for our mothers. You bring anchors to your world, which was once home to us, and we'll use them to testify. Show the first magical fetish to the spirits. We no longer see the world of flesh seeker, only the essence and the horrors of living things, words though, words may echo through the veil, and sometimes Sometimes we may hear them. Last night, this place was filled with a scream that went on and on, drawing us to it. It was a man crying out for a witness as he died. And so we came to bear witness, but fled in terror before the malevolent spirit that profaned the man's remains. This spirit was other. It was not of this place. It has twisted its way through the veil and through the dark to come here. So the second magical fetish to the spirits. When the other had gone then we returned to our vigil, we found two creatures of flesh. One you would call an elf, unsullied by technology, unable to channel the energies of the cosmos. Yet his spirit was corrupted from within. He was dark and twisted not like the other, so we did not flee. The second we knew to be a troll, ribbons of his essence have been flayed from him, leaving cold machinery behind. His aura was the aura of a simple and confused. Between elf and troll lay the remains of the man, whose sister now chants to us for justice. Elf. His essence remains in this place. Where the man died, something has been left behind. A small part of him, perhaps. Spirit, can you tell us any more? The spirits begin to fade, all but the one. Its eyes harden and it takes full measure of you, as if to commit everything about you to memory. No, we must not stay. With the spirits gone, the young shaman releases her hold on the magical tether, tether, connecting her to the other realm. She reels from the backlash, or perhaps from the emotional toll of knowing her brother's last moments. They saw him. They were with him when he died. You all right? She takes a series of controlled breaths, only sh shuddering with the first few. No. But I will be. I, I, I don't want that for him. Not what those poor souls have endured. My brother deserves to be free. He will be once we find his killer. Yes, the, the elf and the troll. We have to find that piece of the elf that spirit spoke of. It's our best hope of stopping this. Okay. So it's going to be, I, I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere in one of, in this room or the other room that's open on the other side as well. Okay, so, right, so that part of the room is just cosmetic. We can't actually get in there. Um, over here, same deal. So it looks like in here is probably where I'm going to find that. Right, if I was an elf, where would I leave part of myself? Apparently not in here. How about if we go all the way up here? I don't notice anything, so... This room over here? Oh, maybe here. 
I was gonna say this room over here might be where it is, but it looks like it's actually over here. Okay. What did they leave behind? Blood. This is what the spirits wanted us to find. The piece of my brother's killer. It's not much, but it's enough. She scowls at it, looking every bit like she intends to reach through a small sample and dismember its owner from afar. Perhaps she can. Is that enough to target a spell? All I need is a drop. An adequate time. But I'm still feeling quite drained. I need to rest before I can try anything so involved. When I'm able, I'll commune with Bear, consult the spirits, and do what must be done. But in the meantime, you might take some portion of the sample to pursue a more conventional avenue of attack. Have some friends who might be able to help. Good. Let me know if you learn anything about this elf and troll pair. And should you find them, I want to be there when they are brought low. I want to see the light leave their eyes for my brother. There is no one else I would rather have by my side. Okay, so we're done with her. We are going to look around because maybe there's something else we can find. We can't get in here. We can't even try to get in there. I was hoping bringing that if we brought, like we have our decker here. I was hoping that she'd be able to maybe get us in somewhere that we can't get in by hacking a door or something, but apparently not. So I want to go check over here. Maybe the toilets, there's going to be not much in there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm thinking there's nothing else here. So I think we should just leave. Let's get ourselves out. Yep. When you return to Seamstress' Union in the early hours of the morning, it seems a completely different place. We reference the normal crowd that haunts it. The bar feels desolate, almost abandoned. It's eerie, like the back hallways of hotels and shopping malls. But you finally have a break in your case, a sample of the Ripper's blood. You just need to find someone to help you analyze it. Hmm. Maybe a job for a buddy Dresden. Okay. But well, I just color for style. Yeah, it's the same thing that we saw before. Oh, it might actually be the doctor downstairs. She could actually do it. Probably for a fee. These are actual real janitors. I like the dude who pretends to be a janitor. Right, so back here. Getting around the intimate back bar. Miss Kabut Kubota. And her coterie gather for breakfast, with the lady herself doing the cooking. The smell of soy calf and something resembling sausage fills the room. Okay, well, let's have a chat with you. Can we even? Yeah, we can. Oh, hi, yo. Would you like some? She stops. Forgive me, Ome. But you look like hell. It's been a long night. She looks you over, noting the signs of your nocturnal activities. She nods. Anyone you can walk away from is a good run. So I've been told. I can tell you have been busy, and I can see by the look on your face that there is something you need. Is this about the Ripper? Yes, I found some DNA evidence. I need help analyzing it. That is excellent. I will unlock the piano so you may go downstairs. I'm certain someone in the safe house will be able to help you if they are awake. It is likely that you will visit the Matrix before the day is done. Here, you take a sausage. Thanks. Gambette Kurasai. Good luck. We certainly will try to do our best. Right, let's get down here. here uh, yep. Yeah. Fine. 
You've been doing a lot of legwork on this job, but it's going to require a trip to cyberspace and back to ID the Ripper. The Matrix, the cybernetic analog of Inside the Grid, the worldwide computer network, a digital world, information brought to life. Inside cyberspace, your avatar does all the work while your meat body is left behind. All around you, your avatar are pathways to other nodes filled with data. I see counter intrusion programs and there are jacked in runners. Cyberspace has as many uh, dangers as the meat world and more. Locked doors, security countermeasures, and black icy or black ice that can fry a Decker's brain. Every movement you make in the matrix can be tracked if you aren't careful. Get dump shocked out and your brain gets fuzzy for a bit. Get hit by an enemy Decker and you can die. Okay. Well, for us, decking is not really going to be that intuitive. Let's come over here, though, now, chat. David Fry the second. Morning. You look like you've been up all night. You're the second person who said that to us. You look like you've seen some action too. Where's Doc Castle? Can either of you two do a DNA analysis on the blood sample? Hmm. Doc Castle's equipment isn't really set up for that. You can see this for a minute. However, I could imply a semiconductor chip. It could decode DNA using a voltage charge instead of light. That would eliminate the use of highly expensive equipment that would be required otherwise. He brightens. I just read a journal about it, so the information is still fresh. Frankly, it should be easy. What do you want to know about? The owner's identity. Ah, that's beyond me. All I can get you is the gene code sequence. But that's where I come in. David... If you can get me that code sequence, I'm pretty sure we can track its owner down via a Matrixron. Will do. Let me know. Let me have the DNA you want to test. Okay, let's give him the blood sample. Soda Pop. When David gives me the sequence, I'll jack in and help you track the blood sample back to its source. Wiz, get to work. A question, if I may, who's... I think it's... The Ripper's blood. No, Drek. He turns to Johnny, excited. Wake up, Johnny boy. We've got work to do, and Soda Pop. If you need any gear, I'll be right here. I just got a second win. Meet you at my rig, Soda Pop. Okay, cool. So, we got some more karma. Probably a good time to... Oh, we got a lot of karma. Probably a good time to spend some on anything to do with rigging. If we can, that is. Decking, drone control, spell casting, charisma, spirit summoning. So, where's rigging? Maybe at the top, melee, strength, range combat, quickness. Okay, that's all. Strength's not going to be it. It's got to be under the tension, right? Uh, decking. Drone control is a rigor, right? Yeah, allows rigor access. Required for decking, main components calculate the chance to hit, and if computer programs are deckers. Okay, so I'm gonna get one there, and one there, and then we're gonna put that. Yeah, we can't really do much though, but I'm gonna get them. Because they are going to help me out. I think. Let's confirm that. And then my other points. Um, I'm pretty sure we can't do any more with that now, right? Yeah, that's basically the limit. Um, so we should uh, really be doing this stuff. So let's go that and that. Good. Now, let's go over and see Johnny. Fangrass, we don't need you right now, I don't think. Ah, here he is. Hey, Johnny. 
Thanks to the semiconductor-based gene sequencing system that David employed, we should have the information we need to track the Ripper in the Matrix. I'm not sure it's going to be the Ripper, though. I'm really impressed with his results, considering it was his first attempt. He's utilizing an unproven technique he'd, already, he'd read about in a science journal. He was working from memory on minimal sleep. Whatever. Uh, that's great, Professor. What's the plan? We hit the Lone Star DNA database. First to see if our donor has a prior criminal record. They have extensive DNA archives. Then we go hunting based on what we find. Let's hit the decks and jack into the matrix. I can get into their private grid easily, but I've got to warn you. Once we're in, it could get a little rough. How much decking experience have you had? Uh, zero. Oh God, why do I have my thing out? Oh, are we in the matrix now? What's going on? Why do I have my sword out? Okay, well, I guess you're the man to do stuff, so. Move to here. Why are we fighting though? And who are we fighting? Can. Okay. So let's go back there. I don't know if they be. Okay. We go there. Okay. Where am that? Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing, so I'm just gonna stick close to him for now. Ah, there we go. What the hell happened then on the other one? I guess it's I guess it's the way the game had to is designed, so they had to do it like that. Okay. Rather just moving us in here. Your snaps just light up. Ah, oh, we missed the rest. We're jacked in though. Johnny's gonna do what we need him to do. So maybe oh is that where we come in so we have to go down here I hope so oh no that actually brought him back in uh, right let's bring me over I guess it's just going to be him inside. Or can we... I don't think we can jack him as well. Okay. Right, so... He's there. What abilities do we have? Ah! This looks like... Maybe... Powerful attack program directed at one target. Doing... No, we don't want to jack out. Let's come here. Prince an attacker expert system program. What are we supposed to do? That's getting out, but it looks like we have to go through there. Let's end the turn. Doesn't do anything.
Oh, there we go. Right. I thought we had to walk through. We just had to walk into it. Right, so we're here. So we've got to try and be sneaky, I guess. The dash towards the head is defended by intrusion countermeasures. Okay. Where is it though? Ah, there. Don't star data store. Let's get here. Okay, we've got three countermeasures. Right, I see. Missed. Not good. Okay, we've got one coming for us, two coming for us. Three coming for us. Okay. White sentry, and these are sniffers. Okay. okay. Some damage. Some more damage. Knock you out. The sniffer, we're gonna remove it. There we go, and then we're gonna have to use this ourself. Okay, and then we can potentially start working on you then. I see it's down, let's see what for the fingerprints or you mean the I guess the DNA fingerprints. Hack DNA database. DNA located 100 percent match. Rest records database. Okay. Subject Silas Forsberg, status deceased, profession, chop shop surgical assistant, priors breaking and entering, two counts, public indecency, one count. Brought in for questioning on accusations of unlicensed plastic surgery. No charges were filed. Unfair match to a dead man. Let's keep looking. So that might be a false trail, I guess. Yeah, let's go across this way this time. Okay, so we have a couple more of those sentry dudes. These ones at least were easier to hit than the other dude, or to kill than the other one, so let's go for you. Oh, that was still with us. Okay, sniff was done. A lot of whiffing going on here. There we go, gotcha. Right. Let's get here. Hacknet news article. Newsnet one return on subject Silas Forsberg, the body of Silas Forsberg, a chops up surgical assistant, was found in an apartment in Snow Homish earlier this week. The body has been there for as long as a month when Forsberg's landlord noticed 
Rancis Mail and contacted authorities. Lone Star representatives have issued a statement saying Forsberg's death has been ruled a suicide. According to the reports, his body, a mass of puncture wounds, and the cause of death was determined to be an overdose of anti stress medication and sedatives. The man's employer claims he was a dedicated employee, though he suffered from bouts of depression. Forsberg, next of kin, could not be located, but the attorney appointed to his estate has located a will written weeks prior, leaving all of his belongings to his psychiatrist. The identity of the psychiatrist has not been released due to privacy concerns. Yet another sad end to a life. As if far too common as if as is far too common here in the small. Okay. Right, so sounds like some kind of either false trail has been laid or Oh hi. Can we get out? Okay. So there is something there. Ow. Let's get over here. More black ice. Okay. Now I want to. Can I shoot at that? I can, but then other things are shooting at me too. Heal on myself. Then see the black ice again. And again. Okay, all this good. Let's take it the black ice if possible. Again. Nice, you're gone. Okay, now I'm gonna go after you. Okay, just one more to deal with. And I think we can take away this turn. Yes, we can. Let's get to the autopsy records then. Autopsy records. Subject Silas Forsberg notes subject was found overdosed on half a dozen different sedatives. Several anti anxiety medications were also found in his system. Face was mutilated, possibly self inflicted. Ident identity could not be confirmed immediately due to the dis disfigurement. Had to check dental records to confirm. No nexus of kin. So they didn't do a they didn't do a DNA thing, they just used dental records to identify them. Large puncture wounds are found in several places on the body, possibly large bore surgical needles. Body has been decomposing for several weeks before the landlord noticed the smell and called the police when no one answered the door. Okay. Um, so we got the autopsy records. Now where else can we go? Is something there? Uh, yeah, data control. Oh, can, what can we do there? I guess we can't do anything there. Right. Yeah, let's head on back then. I've been that way. I want to check over here then. Is there another way to go? I don't think so. Is that everything? Let's check. Let's go over to the entity of the Ripper. Jack out of the land. Okay. I guess that what, that's what we're supposed to do then. Let's just go and jack out. But not this way. That could do damage to Johnny. Let's just go straight out this way. And then jack out. Okay. So here's what we know. Our DNA evidence belongs to a dead man whose debt was never explained. He worked with 
chop shops, which fits with the living guy that you met. The news that said he left his estate to his psychiatrist. Maybe finding out who his psychiatrist was will give us our next clue. My gut says we can deck into the medical board's records and reverse track to find this doctor. You win? Punch it, punch it, man. Okay, so he's gonna go in and do this then. It's this is certainly weird. Uh, oh, he can't. There we go. In you go, buddy. Right. So now we know where we're going. So we got uh, these guys here. So let's go take cover first. And then try and take that out. Taking you out, then I want to move here, and then powerful attack program directed at one target doing um, no, that's this is the end of turn. this again. There we go, gotcha. Right, medical board, let's check that. Searching medical records, Silas Forsberg. Medical record file for Silas Forsberg located. Okay, 2020 to 2030. Pediatric record partial. One particular pediat pediatrician's entry stands out on the rest. Child suffers from a, a chronic depression and social anxiety, most likely caused by his physical abnormalities. We've seen many cases like this recently, with the outbreak of changeling children being born, with the ab aberrant philosoph physiological, um, we're seeing there is no telling what sort of brain functions are affected. Prescribing a series of sedatives, last year that seemed to have no effect, upping the dosage. Okay, and the next set. Data missing or corrupted. Contact your administrator for help. And here, the file is quite large and takes well over an hour to read through. The final entry, however, is the most significant. It's written by Dr. Henry Holmes. Silas has overcome significant mental disorders and no longer goes through periods of violent episodes. Latest medications have proven especially effective, but I believe that being treated by another elf has significantly impacted his treatment. Unfortunately, my efforts to maintain an emotional boundary with him have proven challenging. He has bonded to me in an unhealthy and frankly an unnerving way. His hero worship exhibits itself in the form of mimicking speech patterns and adopting my dress. For this reason and for the health of the patient, I am assigning another doctor to his case. I'll inform him at his next session. Okay, so it looks like he basically assumed his, or maybe he assumed his um, psychiatrist's identity. Okay, so we can move on from here. So this is the way to go. Okay. Ow. Mission failed, Johnny got burned. Uh, okay. Wow, he just got completely 
screwing that now, didn't he? How far does this pull it back though? Do you have to go through the whole medical thing? Yeah, we do. Shit. Okay, well, let's very quickly go through that now. Cause... Oh, because we don't need... So we'll talk to you. Right, there we go. you and Johnny can do the business now see this time we didn't actually get to maybe I did hit it but I don't it didn't feel like I didn't touch my mouse so I don't know how it actually it. let's hit the decks and jack into the matrix I can get into their private grid easily but I've got to warn you once we're in it could get a little rough how much decking experience do you have? No experience. What now? I have a trode net here. It's a headband you wear that lets you piggyback me in the matrix. You'll see and hear everything I do. Okay. So th that's what should have happened the first time. I guess there was a glitch in the game. Okay. So let's get Johnny in. Can't go that way yet. Right. Here. Okay, these things again. And on to the next part. Over here first. Okay, same as before. Right, so take over here and try and take you out before we have to deal with the others. Easier, so I'll take you up first, and we're gonna go for you. I don't know what happened with the other one. Why did it just like insta kill him? Your time. We'll just quickly go through that. 
ourselves out of there and into the last one. Wait, we've already done those? Really? No, we haven't. So no black ice this time, which is good. Hopefully that means when we go to the next one, there won't be black ice there either. Give me a minute to my thoughts. And here I'm going to make a save. Certainly would be a good idea, I think. Then this way, hopefully we can't die again. In. Right. So we're jacked in. The white sparky. where that thing got me. I'm gonna go before. Let's heal ourselves. And try and take you out as best as can. Okay, you're done. So it's now between the two of us. on you. Missed. It's a regular attack at you. Right. Um, try again. Nice. If we hit again, I think you're gone. We're pretty close to. Yeah, pretty close to gone. So we're now going to move to here. It's going to give us a much better chance to hit. And that one. No. Missed. And you hit us instead. There we go. Gotcha. Right, let's go to medical board number two then. Combined records located Henry Hollings Holmes MD PhD. Okay, current employment status. Current employment status, Dr. Henry Holmes currently holds position of Chief Psychiatrist and Administrator at Mercy Mental Hospital, Snohomish, Washington, UCAS. Okay, previous employers. Previous employers, 2045 to 54, Psychiatrist in Residence, Mercy Mental Hospital in Snohomish, Washington, UCAS. 40 to 45, attending psych Psychiatrist, Mercy Mental Hospital, Snohomish. And uh, 30 to 40 private practice. Okay. And we can leave the employment stuff. Jack, 
out of the land. Okay, we just need to get out of here now. Yeah, so I'm still not sure what happened to us the first time. Obviously it wasn't good. Okay, and then just get over there. And there we come. Reality is at the end of the day contextual and as the meat world comes back into focus your head once again tries to settle on which world is the real one. While the philosophical question lingers, your meat body demands food and drink, you disconnect from your deck to find that the union safe house is risen. Okay, cool. Everybody's up and about then. Right, so we got some power to spend. So we didn't need all that um, stuff in the end for decking and stuff. Uh, I still want to up my intelligence though. So. I think it is going to be important in the future to be able to do some stuff like that on our own. We can't always rely on Johnny to do it for us. And then on top of that, I want to go strength and then these two. Okay, let's confirm that. And then next time then we'll follow up on the information that we got. So hope you have enjoyed and hope to see you all next time. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button there on the right or checking out some other videos here on the left or perhaps you might even share with some friends.